G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder and welcome to a plane that is being actively hampered by a very strange decision of the developers. This is the F-16A ADF and is a plane that is one of the first to have fly-by-wire controls. As I understand it, it has currently got a G limiter in it which prevents it from pulling insane amounts of Gs. This prevents it from performing really sharp and tight maneuvers giving it some form of compression at higher speeds, thus limiting it in its combat effectiveness. Overall, the F-16 is a fairly decent plane, but much like the MiG-29, I have some very significant qualms about the actual plane itself. Uh, its missiles, however, are very, very nice, and of course this thing carries the same radar as is on the F-4 EJ Kai, and is a very, very good radar to boot. I find this particular radar to be sort of in the mid-ground of what I would consider to be adept. Uh, it's got a fairly nice 60 degree angle. Uh, it's got a decent set of ranges, that being 19 and 37 kilometers. And of course, you can carry two fairly strong AIM-7Ms, which are at the moment identical to the AIM-7Fs. These are missiles that have a fairly long, what I would like to call standoff range, where in a head-on, in a joust, you are able to basically send your stick a good 40 kilometers before it intercepts its opponent. However, in a rear-facing situation or in other situations where the opponent is aware and actively dodging these missiles, you will more likely have a range effective of about 4 to 5 kilometers. You're not really going to find that these missiles are particularly effective, and that just goes for the AIM-7F in general, because naturally the radars that we are currently seeing are not capable of sustaining notching and other forms of, uh, of countermeasures. And speaking of countermeasures, I have lately found that the sort of chaff that is being used has been somewhat effective. So the F-16 has its work cut out for it, but you know what? It is actually perfectly capable of dealing with some of these opponents. The only major issue I have with this plane is its maneuverability. It's a bit of a bus, and the F-16 was well known to be very agile. And this is simply because Gaijin have limited its ability to pull high Gs simply by adding the G limiter. I'm not really sure how this is, works, whether or not this is perfectly accurate, whether or not this should stay in the game, but the fact of the matter is that it is in the game, and this makes this plane really difficult to maneuver at really high speeds, meaning that you have to drop to very low speeds in order to get the effectiveness of the aircraft true. This is a really big problem for this plane, and most particularly this particular battle rating, where maneuvering at high speed is critical to dodging things that are coming straight towards you, like this F-4F failed to dodge the AIM-7. We're going to fire an AIM-9L here. We've got a couple of opponents that aren't really paying attention, and this is quite similar to the situation that I had uh, in the MiG-29 video, where there were several planes that were not paying attention, and hence paid a repair cost. This particular MiG-29 that I had fired at before uh, was paying attention, this Tornado IDS was not paying attention, and this particular MiG-29 that got the last AIM-9 uh, also was not paying attention. The Kfir was going to be dinner, but unfortunately for him, he is definitely spiraling down into the ground, and I don't really want to be a kill stealer. Uh, so we're just going to be sort of farming some Tornadoes at this point, and I find that kind of sad, because the Tornado is a fucking terrible plane. There is no two ways about it. Uh, what is also absolutely terrible is my aim. Have a look at this absolute dog water aim that I am absolutely butchering right here. I'm underleading the gun, and that is one of the things that I've found the F-16 to kind of struggle with. You can't really snap onto targets like you can in, say, the F-14, or even, even sometimes in the Phantom you can do this sort of stuff. But I'm talking like the high AOA, MiG-21, uh, even in the MiG-23, you can do stuff like this. And I, I just find it really frustrating that I can't do things like this in a plane that is supposed to be the top dog. And uh, whilst this isn't the end of the world, it's certainly part of the gameplay, and uh, the MiG-29 has this as well. Uh, but honestly, I just don't really like having this as a gameplay element. Um, I, think, I think it does detract from the otherwise excellent performance of the F-16. Now there's an F4E coming in here, uh, and of course being at the speed that I'm at, I am starting to compress, and it is starting to weigh down on the plane. I really want to be around the sort of 600 mark, which is where the majority of my flight performance will come from. Have a look at this absolute dog water shot too. I'm under leading, and that's simply because uh, it's a mix of skill issue and plane being a little fat. Um, 
I seriously don't like this. I just, I just wish it wasn't the case. And this is the first match that I really want to show to you guys in order to demonstrate my main issues with the plane. Don't get me wrong, it's still quite competitive, but this particular issue weighs down on the plane and detracts from it in a way that is not seen in other aircraft around this tier, except for that of the MiG-29. And like I said in the MiG-29 video, I found myself fairly disappointed by the plane. And likewise, I find myself a little bit disappointed by the performance of the F-16 as well. I fully expected this plane to be highly maneuverable, able to turn within phantoms, able to th do things like uh, two-circle MiG-21s, uh, but I just find that I can't do that sort of thing because the plane is limited. And I don't really know if that's a, a, an issue of the plane, an issue of Gaijin modeling the flight uh, model incorrectly, but it's at the end of the day, it's hampering my ability to fight this MiG-29. I don't understand what is going on here, but at the end of the day, I thought I might show you this because I think that there is something going on here. I put the afterburner on and I find that I can maneuver a little better sometimes and sometimes a little worse and there's no real rhyme or reason. The only thing that really changes is me using my mouse and keyboard controls or me using the mouse itself and I don't really know, like this turn here is quite sharp, but where did that come from? Uh, unfortunately for me, I managed to win that dogfight and completely carry and win the whole match. So we're going to move on to the next one. Quite some quite boring gameplay for you, if I do say so myself. Uh, but we are moving on here and we have a MiG-23. Now, I don't really know if he's going to head towards me, but I don't really want to engage if he isn't because I don't have the range. And of course, I'm going to get notched. So it's kind of suboptimal. The MiG-23 is going away. There is a Mirage who looks like he's chasing after the Harrier. I'm going to fire a missile, but I do want to wait till I get just within range. I know that the Mirage is pretty slow. Uh, three and a half kilometers should do the trick. This MiG-23 looks like he's not paying attention, so I'm going to send one away towards him. Hopefully that lands, and yes, it does. He fled a little bit too late there. Um, and of course, the Mirage is a Mirage F1C, so it's basically dog water and a meaningless kill anyway. Uh, but we are going to be firing a couple of missiles again here. Uh, it looks like the Mirage is going to be the next one for breakfast, but luckily for this F1CT, he manages to do some good work and use his little brain. Uh, unfortunately for me, that means that I'm down a kill. But you know what? If you can use your flares, you can deflect the 9Ls quite well. Now, this leaves me with two AIM-7Ms, or AIM-7Fs, whatever you really want to call them. So, uh, a lot happens, but we're going to kind of skip forward and show you exactly what the 7Ms are really, really good for. Of course, they're good for that short range, but you know what, they're also good for that long range as well. And I've managed to pick up a target sort of late game, and we are sort of just going to see what our luck is. This is a pretty long range kill, and I think this is the longest range that I've ever fired a missile from and landed a hit after maybe the AIM-54 Phoenixes. Like, those things are pretty pretty crazy in their range. And I just wanted to make sure that this plane was absolutely not going to move. So at about 25 kilometers, I send the AIM-7M and off it goes on its merry way. This thing has a fairly long burn time. I think it's around 45 seconds uh, and its travel time is a little bit longer. I know it's got a two-stage engine, um, which really allows it to just be carried such a fair distance. And whilst the target is closing into about the 12 kilometer mark, uh, I think it is just that time there. It might not be a 45 second burn time. I think it's a 45 second flight time or 45 something. It's on the stat card. But at the end of the day, the Mirage is now also a kill on the stat card. Moving swiftly on to the next match, we are basically doing what we do in every single match. We're skirting around the outside of the battle, looking for a couple of unfortunate souls who are willing to come jousting with the F-16 and the AIM-7. We've got a little boy here, a tornado. I'm just going to leave him because I'm fairly confident that he is going to be absolutely destroyed by every other enemy that is, uh, sorry, every other ally that is sort of following me. But I don't know. I think he's going to get away scot-free for a while. I'm going to slowly turn in here. I'm just spotting that MiG-23, and it looks like he is not quite heading for me. So I'm just going to wait for him to close that gap a little bit. It looks like he's flying away. It looks like he's turned away. He's flaring a little bit, uh, and I think that F-14 has fired a missile at him. Now they're starting to engage in a turning battle. The Su-17 also is going to get a missile heading straight towards him. But uh, lovely for me, the F-14 graciously decides to accept such a generous gift. Uh, and unfortunately for me, that lands me with a team kill. 
I am honestly flabbergasted at that kill. I don't understand why. Uh, I guess the F14 is just a very warm boy. So the MiG-23 ML there takes a missile to the face as well. And this is another thing that the AIM-7s are really, really good for, particularly the AIM-7F. Now, this F-14 is probably going to face the wrath of another AIM-7M. We're going to warm him up and send the AIM-7 on the way. Is the lock going to break by the time? Is he going to avoid it? Absolutely not. He's just too slow to avoid a missile like that. And I have two 9Ls to spare, which allows me to go and sneak up on some enemies doing some dogfighting. I do happen to like the M9Ls. I find them to be very good for this particular meta. The ability to sort of not quite completely frontal lock, but that sort of semi-front lock where the opponents are not really paying attention. You tend to get some really, really strong results there. And as a result, you can really rack up kills just by sort of being around your opponents and having a target-rich environment. So this F-14 here, speaking of target-rich, is not paying attention and might potentially repay a repair cost. This F-16 is also going to be next up on the list. And luckily for me, I get that F-16 without any issues whatsoever. You'll notice that some of this gameplay in the background has been of me dying a lot, and this is one of the planes that I have had a fairly high death rate in. Uh, I tend to die a lot in these particular planes, but the F-14 is a little bit immune to that, and I have to figure out why. My, my only sort of reasoning that I can figure out is just that inability to turn, but also I guess there's a little bit of lack of brain cell usage, because I am often finding that I'm getting notched, uh, not notched, but like snuck up upon, uh, quite a fair bit. I'm, it's, it's just the nature of the game at the moment. We have no ability to sort of spot targets that are a little less close than you might think. These, some of these guys come out from about two or three kilometers, fire an R60 and that's a day. Maybe this is a ploy to try and make the R60 and the Russian planes a little bit more uh, viable, but I genuinely just think that it is the inability of the game to produce a fairly consistent result all the time. Now, the MiG-23 ML, you might think, well, why didn't he die? And the simple answer is because he was already dead. The F-16A is in the same situation here, and the, F1, uh, the FG-1 is also looking super juicy. So I'm going to send a 9L. I honestly thought that was an AIM-7, but uh, here we go. <laughs> Got myself a kill without even realizing it. The FG-1 is up next. I have one AIM-7M left, and it looks like the FG-1 is going to be absolutely dead. The J-8 is going for a really close in joust with the J-8s. Uh, he's, he's testing his luck, but unfortunately for him, no dice at all. The F-16's fired a 9L, the MF has fired an R-60M, and the Mirage is pulling his little wiener down below me, so I'm going to go for him instead. It looks like the Mirage is probably going to be the biggest threat here, and secondary to that is the F-16. I believe the MiG-23 uh, can be a bit of a toothless tiger, so we are not really going to prioritize the MiG-23, but also this F-5 here has the potential to outmaneuver, and uh, of course I have the potential to outgun, but of course my aim is so stellar that I managed to just kill them all in a single bullet, and that is pretty much the end of it. Of course not, I have potato aim once again, and this is what happens when you take a break for a few days and do things like go on holidays and touch some grass. You have really, really bad aim, so this Mirage 2000 is, instead of firing, uh, you know, just a single relatively reasonable salvo, you end up getting a really long spray, and it just ends up really doing lots of damage. And that's one thing that I would also like to talk about. The 20 mil has recently been nerfed. And I think this by recently, I mean uh, maybe a patch ago or maybe a few weeks ago. I found that the potency of the 20 millimeter, uh, the, the, the 20 millimeter gun is just, it's just not there. Uh, now I do say that while setting a Mirage 2000 on fire, but the first time should have been the only time that I needed to take him out. And I find that to be a little bit of a frustrating thing in the game. I just kind of wish that uh, I was able to do a little bit more damage with the Vulcan and do a little bit more maneuvering, but unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for the F-16 for today. I hope you enjoyed, and of course, whilst I do shit on the F-16, just know that it is still a very, very good plane, and it still carries a fair amount of weight in game. Still, not as much as the F-14, though. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you all for watching. And of course, if you would like to continue supporting the channel, I suggest having a look at some other content on my channel. There should be some up on screen for you now, whatever the algorithm remarks is best for you guys. But until then, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.